<laughs> Nearly. <laughs> I don't know, do you want to, yeah, I think there's some people, yeah, some people won't know me. Okay, good morning everyone, uh, I hope you have the uh, rest very well last night. Uh, today we are starting with a uh, very important conference for, for everyone of us uh, about the uh, uh, project, uh, who is ready, uh, we are waiting for the answer about the European uh, Community. Mm -hmm. um, the answer, uh, uh, the answer we, uh, we hope they, they give us the answer about uh, July or yeah, August. August. Oh, uh, and we would like to, to, for the matter, to, to start with this one because it, uh, we, we think it, uh, it's very important for the future of our students really high <laughs> which is unusual because I'm quite short but um, okay I'm going to spend some time just explaining about the project to you um, I think some of you some of you will know more than others um, and but hopefully it will involve um, all of you if we're successful the project is called eggs um, which <coughs> It wasn't my idea to call it eggs, it was my colleague uh, Gideon, um, but he, he thinks it's good. Uh, it stands for Employability of Graduates in Sport. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to explain the project, uh, talk about the partners, of which many of you are those partners, um, talk about the advisory group, and um, again, those of you who are partners, um, uh, or could, could be part of the advisory group if you wanted to be. Talk about how the project is uh, organised and they organise it in what we call work packages. So pa packages of activity, the time scales, and then we have, um, we have plenty of time because I, I don't think I will be um, the whole uh, hour, but um, that's good because we can have some discussion if there are, uh, um, if there are any questions. So, first of all, <laughs> as Alfonso has said, we won't hear until August 2013 whether we're successful. Um, my colleague Gideon, uh, we have in the University of Gloucestershire, we have a, 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 a department of two people, um, which is called the European Funding Office. So it's a grand title for two people, but they do, uh, they do very good work. And um, for those of you who I met last year, you'll know that's one of the reasons why I think you as a group asked uh, the University of Gloucestershire to, to take the lead on the project because we have this, uh, this office uh, that can support applications. So Gideon and, and Joe, the, the two people who work in that office, are th what they do, their job is to apply for, to work with academics to apply for European grants. So they know quite a lot about this area. They think that the application is very good, they think it's a strong application and I think that's um, really because you as a group have been talking about this idea for quite some time and good, proje good projects come from you know, discussions and, um, and they develop over time. Um, so we think it's a good bid, we're pleased with it and we're pleased with all of the, the work that all of you have done as well. Um, but it's a very competitive stream of funding. Uh, so it's good, but there might be ones that are better. So we just don't know, and we can find out 
no information, they don't give any information out until we find out whether we're successful or not. So I did say to Gideon last week, I sent him the presentation and said, have I included everything? Do you want me to add anything? And he said, it might be a little premature talking about the project. But I said, well, yes, but you know, if, uh, if we do get the project, it's a great opportunity to meet people um, and, and talk about the project before we start. So let's be positive, fingers crossed. Oh, well, that's my. <laughs> okay, so the project is based, and many of you will, will, will know this information, but for those of you who don't, it's a little bit of background information. Um, uh, is, am I loud enough? Yes. Clear enough? Perfect. Yeah, okay, fine, okay. Um, many of you will know that across Europe there are some uh, very high levels of youth unemployment but what we have is a quite a, a range of youth unemployment um, so in some countries it's very low and in other countries for example Spain and Greece it's very high okay uh, in Germany for example the, the levels are the, lo the lowest in in Europe and this is important because when we talk about who the partners are um, to make sure that our bid uh, is strong, we, need to we needed countries that reflected that range of unemployment levels. Uh, we also did, for those of you who, who were involved last year in this conference where we talked about putting an, an application together, between September and December, and the bid, the bid was submitted in February, between um, uh, October, November and December, we did a very basic uh, needs analysis to provide us with some evidence for the application. Um, because as you know, for those of you who are involved in research, we need evidence to prove that we have a question that needs answering. So we, um, we didn't want the bid to be criticised for not being based on our own evidence, even though we have you know, uh, European figures regarding unemployment. So we did, um, and again, many of you were involved in that audit, so I thank you for, um, for, for helping us, helping, helping the bid. And, and very quickly, in two months or three months, we reached across the six countries, 35 employers of sports graduates. Um, so that included both public and private organisations, <coughs> local government, leisure centres, physiotherapy um, uh, clinics, uh, sports clubs, football clubs, etc. So 35 employers of sports graduates and 256 graduates from across the six countries. So whilst those numbers aren't huge, for a, a needs analysis that provides us with some, some evidence for the application, you know, that's, that's, that's good. And what was even better is the needs analysis told us what we thought. Because the danger of um, having an idea is then finding out that actually that's not correct. <laughs> so we found out from the employers and the graduates that there was some um, discrepancy. So there, was some, so there are some problems about what graduates are, being, uh, are graduating with and what employers actually want them to have. Okay, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. The other, the other background information that's, that's relevant is that sport in the, um, in the EU uh, is a, employs an awful lot of people. So we found some figures here, uh, sport-related employment. Um, the Czech Republic, uh, 90,000 employees. And, and obviously, some of, you know, the Czech Republic's a small country compared to, to France uh, and Spain. Um, so you can see there that it, there, are a, a, there are a lot of people who work in the sport industry. Not all of those will be graduates, but we, we've made an assumption that most of them are. <laughs> um, so it, we, we kind of, what we were trying to do was say, here's the problem, youth unemployment. You know, youth unemployment is important. It's important for young people to have qualifications. Um, we've got evidence that there is... Um, some, uh, some issues, employers want certain things and graduates have different things and that the sports sector is, employs a, a large number of people. So this is making our case for the, the project. So the needs analysis that we did was, was very interesting and as I said, further provided evidence of um, the importance of, of the idea that, that, that this group had 
Um, so the graduates said that 60% of them stated that they had relevant work experience for employment. And they also stated that they were confident that they had the skills required for employment. So 80% of them thought that they had the skills required for employment. So you think, okay, so they're, they're leaving quite confident and they're leaving thinking that they know what they're doing. But <laughs> the employers, 68% stated that graduates have insufficient work experience. And um, employers find graduates lacking in skills, administration skills, subject knowledge, skills and expertise, communication skills. So this was just what we wanted to find because it would appear that, uh, and maybe we as higher education institutions are providing graduates with maybe what we think they need, but employers would like other things as well. So um, it, sets, it sets the project nicely up by finding out that there is, there is a problem, there is a mix, mismatch between what graduates are leaving with and what employ, employers actually want. Um, so <clears throat> that was really, really interesting to see. Do stop me if we, as, if we go if you have questions. Um, so what, what we discussed then were, well, what are the challenges? The, 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 the information that we gathered, what, to, what are the challenges? So we asked, why is there a problem with the employability of sports graduates? So why is the needs analysis telling us this? Is there a deficiency in the curriculum? You know, do we, for example, do I, as a, as a researcher, think that the student needs to know this, but in actual fact, the person, the person who's employing the student to run uh, football programs thinks they need, to, you, they need something else? Is there a deficiency in the applied knowledge of lecturers? So are those of us involved in delivering higher education programs, are we, do, are we too removed from the real world and the, and the world of, of employment? Um, and also, is there a lack of opportunities for experiences in employment um, in, in universities, in higher education institutions? So p possibly yes to some of these in some areas, Possibly no, but these are the questions that, that were, were, these are the challenges that we, we think we, the, the project wants to address. So to address the challenges, we, the, the project talks about developing a closer strategic relationship between employers and higher education institutions um, to facilitate opportunities for employment experiences placements, vocational experience, uh, internships. They're called different things in different countries and in different universities, but basically it's about giving the student an opportunity to experience work. And also to give them applied real world problem solving projects. Now this could be in the university or it could be with the employer or it could be a combination. So it's really just about in increasing their um, applied knowledge and experience. So the project aims uh, are as follows, and I've pretty much taken these from the application. So we've, or, although we've done a basic needs analysis to, um, to see whether to, to, to support the application, if we're successful in the application, then we will need to do a more thorough needs analysis because although the numbers are good for a, a pilot study, they're not uh, you know, obviously great for um, a wider study. So one of the first things that we said we would do is determine the current employment status of sports graduates within the EU, so across the partner countries and using um, this network and also find out about their opinions and experiences of employment. So to really, to do the needs analysis more thoroughly, but also uh, more broadly, so to have more numbers. In addition to that, we want to investigate employers' opinions and experiences, experiences of graduates. So again, to do the needs analysis with employers, but to do it um, more broadly and with more numbers and to identify potential improvements for employability. So to find out from the employers 
what could be done to improve the employability of, of um, young people in sport. And then we will want to do uh, to investigate the current employability practice in higher education um, across the EU, identifying examples of good practice. So we know from the conversations that we've had with partners and with, um, with the network that there are good things taking place, but it would be good to find out all of those across the EU and share those um, across different institutions and the different countries. Now it might be that an a, um, a example of good practice in the UK um, isn't something that could be replicated in, in Germany, but some things may be learned and, and vice versa, because obviously each of our countries, uh, the structure and, and so on are different. But we can learn something, we can certainly learn something from other people's examples of good practice. Um, and change our practice and overall improve it across, across the EU, across the partners involved in the project. We also aim to develop a formal networking in each of the partner countries um, and develop a, a, a good um, formal union between the higher education institutions in that country, in the partner countries, and with employers. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And then to, to finish off, so the, the, output, uh, the output of these aims would be the networking groups between the employers and the higher education institutions. And we aim to develop toolkits, so a sort of how to do this guide um, for employers and HEIs to, to promote um, and develop opportunities for improving the employability of, of graduates in sport. And these toolkits will be available online um, in all of the partner uh, languages. Um, and so therefore, in terms of, they, and they would be freely accessible on, on, online. And so therefore, there are other, the other, other countries in the EU who aren't involved in the project, um, you know, can still access them in, in uh, six different languages. Assuming they can speak one of those six. But I'm sure most of them probably can. Okay, so that's, um, does, does that explain the project? Yeah. Okay. Jürgen say yes, but Jürgen knows it well. <laughs> does, does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah. very clear. Yeah. I wasn't here last year. So. Oh, okay. And, and, okay, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the partners, I, I mentioned uh, before that it's important to make the bid strong that um, the partners need to be really picked for a strategic re re reason. So we needed a partner in Spain and we needed a partner in Greece because of the high levels of youth unemployment. We needed a partner in Germany because of the low levels of youth unemployment. And we needed a range of countries around um, Europe. Um, I know and, and, and hopefully Jürgen ex did explain this to some of you individually, it's, it's not a good idea to have more than one academic partner from the same country on the bid. And that's, that's why I know some of you, um, I, I know we've had some conversations with, with you. So um, there is really, it just doesn't make our bid very strong if we have three universities from France, two from Spain, two from the UK. It, 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 they want to see a, 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 a range of, of uh, countries. So um, I, I hope that's, that's okay for those of you who, who aren't the, um, the formal academic partners. And we have two employer partners, and I believe we have El Pozo uh, in, in the room today, so hello. Um, and the good thing about our employer partners is we have um, a private employer partner and a public employer partner. So um, we'll, we, we have a, you know, both, both sides. Um, we have the... We did try and find the partner outside of the UK, um, but we were, we were struggling a little and time was getting very tight. So we went with um, our local borough council, um, but they very quickly got us the information we needed. And um, four, four of their managers, um, and there was a, there's about seven of them in the, in the body, in the, in the main department, are all graduates of our university. 
So they were very keen to be involved and, and they employ a, a, a large number um, of um, sports graduates from exercise to sport uh, and everything in between. Uh, and El, El Pozo is a private sports organisation here uh, in Murcia um, and uh, they also employ a range of sports graduates um, in the sports area, um, sports coaches uh, and, and so on. Um, and so you can see we've got UK, Spain, France, Czech Republic, Germany uh, and Greece. So the advisory group, excuse me a moment. So for those of you who aren't down on that partner list, um, again what, what we think makes our bid very strong is that we're not just limited to the partners that we have in the group, but that we also can link into this network um, and obviously this, this project, this idea came from this network. Um, so we, we've really um, embedded the advisory group into the project as much as we're able to within the confines of the, of the project, of, of the bid. Um, so it's um, predominantly this network of higher education institutions and, and uh, Jürgen I know has been communicating with, with you all um, on this project and, and hopefully has kept you informed on that. And we can talk, I think we have some time uh, today to talk more about that advisory group and, and how it could function, um, which, would be, which would be good. Um, and we also have um, in that advisory group, there is a European, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this group, um, a European network of employers in sport and exercise, which is called NZ. There's a lot, lots of E's and N's in, these, uh, in the advisory group, EN3S and NZ. Um, who are, I think they have about, if I remember, about a thousand members, Alfonso? The NZ? NZ or NG? Ooh, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, I know this group. They oh, okay. They used to be a very big group. Yeah. But since the last year, they think that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we, when we had some conversations about, I think they have about a thousand members. Um, so, uh, they were very interested to be involved uh, in the project. So again, they, you know, it looks, it looks good. And also, the important, the the importance, the important thing for the European Commission is that the project has the maximum reach across Europe. So by having the advisory group, by having your network, and and obviously, um, you know, the. the uh, universities in, in the same countries, you know, but, you know, some countries are very big, so that's really important from the advisory group, but also to have this group of employers as well gives us a, a potential to have a wide, a very wide reach across Europe. Okay. Um, so the advisory group, the, this is, again, this is taken from the bid, but, you know, we can, we can talk more about this. They really have an important supporting role and, um, and certainly to ensure that everything that the project does has the maximum reach um, and, and because we will be judged on that and obviously you know, there are you know, hundreds of universities, probably thousands of universities and employers in the sports area that could benefit from this project. And, and we can individually you know, link with all of those. Um, they've also got an important role uh, networking with employers in their own areas and and assisting with the dissemination of the project overall, particularly um, once we have the toolkits uh, finished towards the end of the project um, with the dissemination of, of those and, and also assisting in the networks between higher education institutes and um, employers. They've also got a role in quality assurance overseeing the... the um, the, the overall project, so they're a bit like um, peer reviewers of the project. Um, the European Commission always want to have um, evaluation embedded into the project, so we've, we've used um, the advisory group, we've suggested that the advisory group supports that evaluation because they're, they're external but not external. So uh, again, hoping that that's the kind of thing they, they want to read. So the individual work packages, <clears throat> now each partner, each partner leads on one of these um, packages. 
Um, so uh, the, the first one, project management and coordination, um, we're, we're down to lead two, but that's because we have two roles. So the project management and coordination would be managed by um, our European funding office, uh, so that they're not academics, um, but they're very good at project management and European project management. And um, I certainly wouldn't be involved in a project without them, because I think I'd be very, very grey, and, um, and, and probably, not, uh, probably not very well either. Um, so so that, that department would, would lead the project management and coordination of the project. And then the needs analysis, uh, we would lead that uh, um, package, work package. Um, but for those of you who, who haven't been involved, and I'm sure some of you have been involved in European projects, but for those of you who haven't been involved, you, one partner leads the work, but everybody still does the work. So it's not a question of n nobody else doing anything. There is a needs analysis in every country, um, but, but somebody coordinates that and then writes the report on it. So um, we're all doing everything, um, but some of us are taking the lead on certain things. So the needs analysis is a bigger, as I said, a bigger um, needs analysis than we did for the uh, application. Uh, work package three, um, this is where, remember, we want to, we want to de develop formal networks in each of the countries between employers and higher education institutions. So these would be, um, s s you know, half day, like a half day conference or a half day workshop, um, periodically over the duration of the project. I think the, I think the networks are due to meet four times, and at each time they have a different, uh, during the lifetime of the project, they have a different thing to talk about and to, to develop, and the ultimate aim of that group is to develop the toolkits. So the, uh, the, the Czech Republic, uh, is anyone from the Czech Republic here? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the Czech Republic are the, are the leads for that, uh, creating the networks. Then um, uh, Cheltenham Borough Council, uh, we needed to um, have one of the employer groups lead one of the work packages. Um, and so um, Cheltenham um, volunteered to, to lead the development of the toolkit for employers. But again, remember, the toolkit will be developed um, in, uh, in each of our countries. And there will be an element, there will be, part of it will be, um, part of it will be the same in every country, but, you know, in English and German and Czech, uh, et cetera. And then there will be a part that will be country specific. Um, because there will be some things that are specific to, to that particular country and then that would be in the language of that particular country. Um, so although Chel Chelton would lead for that, um, we, you know, we would all, each of the partners would develop the, their own toolkit in their own countries under their guidance. Um, and then the, the toolkit for um, higher education institutions, uh, Gottingham uh, are the lead for, for that and again the same thing applies, there would be part of it that is the same for every country in, in all of the languages and then where appropriate there would be a country specific part for that toolkit. And uh, the quality assurance, uh, that's the, the Greek partner, um, Th Thessaly, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. I'll learn if we get the project. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and that's really about um, evaluating and um, ensuring the quality through the project, linking, linking in with the advisory group as well, remember, because that's an important role as well. And then dissemination of the product, and, and dissemination pretty much starts, it, it starts at the beginning because you need to start planning for it, uh, and then obviously pretty much after the year one it starts to develop, um, and that's the University of Murthia's uh, the lead for that. Um, and then um, exploitation is about ensuring that we exploit, they use the word exploit, um, we get maximum value out of the product and, and that, that we build in the fact that sustainability into the project after the um, duration of the project. And that, that's why we, we hope that by developing the formal networks between higher education institutions and uh, employers, that they then become regular formal um, networks that, develop, that, that continue after the lifetime of the project. 
Um, and so those types of plans are built into um, the exploitation um, uh, work package which is led by um, the French partner. So that's, that's kind of a... There's a lot in this, <laughs> so I'm trying, not to, I'm trying to give you an overall view rather than bore you senseless with the detail. Um, but I could bore you senseless with the detail, I'm sure. Um, okay, time scales. Uh, if successful, we'll know in August. Uh, it's around.